Hello, and welcome back to Dr. S's Random Math Layer, after a long time. Today's video deals with ellipses, in what is known as the standard form, in the form of problem 6. An ellipse is a type of conic section, a term we will define subsequently, as are the circle, parabola, and hyperbola. This topic is often studied in a course in analytic geometry, or pre-calculus, at the high school senior or college freshman level. Before solving problem 6, we shall briefly discuss the history and modern applications of ellipses. Links to some important online resources will be provided toward the end of this video. Here is the statement of problem 6. Put the equation of the ellipse, x squared plus 10x, plus 9y squared, minus 72y, equal to negative 160, denoted by star, in standard form. Plot its graph in the xy plane. A good question to ask is what is so special about ellipses anyway? Well, to start off, they are a type of conic section, which is a curve that is obtained by intersecting the surface of a right circular cone with a plane. In fact, parabolas and hyperbolas are conic sections as well. A little later, we shall see that a circle is a special case of an ellipse. In particular, intersecting a right circular cone with an inclined plane results in an ellipse, as can be seen in the diagram on the right. Here are some quick facts and review we will need to solve this problem. First, by definition an ellipse is a plane curve that is the set of points, given by coordinates x, y, such that the sum of their distances from two fixed points, called foci, is a constant. Second, ellipses have two orthogonal axes of symmetry, where the longer axis is called the major axis, and the shorter axis is called the minor axis. Next. The endpoints of the major axis are called vertices, and those of the minor axis are called covertices. Finally, the center of an ellipse is the midpoint of the major and minor axes. In figure 1, on the right, we have a horizontally oriented ellipse with the origin as its center, given in red. The foci are given in blue, and the vertices and covertices are given in black. Note that the major axis is horizontal, while the minor axis is vertical. This means that the orientation of the major axis is directly dependent on whether the ellipse is horizontally or vertically oriented. For all intents and purposes, we will only be looking at horizontally or vertically oriented ellipses in the xy plane, that are not rotated. An online resource for rotated ellipses will be given toward the end of this video. We continue with a few more facts and review that we will need. Consider real constants, a and b, bigger than zero, such that, a, is greater than b, and let c equal plus or minus the square root of, a squared, minus, b squared. We call, a, the length of the semi-major axis, which is half the length of the major axis. Then b is the length of the semi-minor axis, which is half the length of the minor axis. Let the point HK denote the center of an ellipse in the XY plane. Then, for a horizontally oriented ellipse, its standard form equation, foci, vertices, and covertices are given as follows. Similarly, for a vertically oriented ellipse, its standard form equation, foci, vertices, and covertices are given as follows. Ellipses can also be expressed in terms of polar coordinates, but because of time constraints, we shall only consider them in Cartesian coordinates. Note that in the standard form equations, if a equals b, then we obtain the equation of a circle centered at the point hk, with radius a. This justifies the fact that a circle is just a special case of an ellipse. This image geometrically summarizes the standard form of an ellipse oriented horizontally versus vertically, 
centered at the point HK, in the XY plane. It can be found at the URL given below. Now we briefly describe some of the history and applications of ellipses. Around the 4th century BC, the Greek mathematician Menachmus was the first to study the ellipse as a conic section, including the parabola and hyperbola. The Greek mathematician Euclid of Alexandria, considered the father of geometry, wrote about the ellipse in his famous work The Elements. This would have a profound impact on the mathematical knowledge of Western civilization for at least two millennia. By the 3rd century BC, the Greek mathematician Apollonius had introduced the terms ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola to the modern mathematical dictionary in his work Conics. Many centuries later, toward the latter part of the Renaissance, the German mathematician and astronomer Johannes Kepler introduced the term focus, when he discovered that the planets of the solar system revolve around the Sun in elliptical orbits. With the development of the theory of elliptic functions, by the early 20th century, the Indian mathematician Srinivasa Ramanujan approximated the length of an ellipse. Today, ellipses are widely applied in acoustics, astrophysics, optics, statistical finance, computer graphics, optimization theory, and many other areas in science and mathematics. Moreover, the general form equation for any conic section in the xy plane is given by ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero where a b c d e and f are real constants with a b and c not all zero which we label as 6.1 in particular for an unrotated ellipse in the xy plane which is either horizontally or vertically oriented b equals zero a does not equal c and the product AC is strictly positive in 6.1. Now we are ready to solve problem 6. Recall that the equation of the ellipse we were given was denoted by star. Note that star is in fact the general form equation of the ellipse, which we need to convert to the standard form equation. To accomplish this, we can complete the square for the x terms and y terms in star. For the x terms x squared plus 10x, we do the following. Note that x plus 5 whole squared equals x squared plus 10x plus 25. Adding 25 to both sides of star, and simplifying, we get x plus 5 whole squared, plus 9y squared, minus 72y equals negative 135, which we label as 6.2. For the y terms 9y squared minus 72y, which we factor as 9 times y squared minus 8y, we use a similar procedure. Note that y minus 4 whole squared equals y squared minus 8y plus 16. Adding 9 times 16, which equals 144, to both sides of 6.2, and simplifying, we get x plus 5 whole squared, plus 9 times y minus 4 whole squared, equals 9, which we label as 6.3. Dividing both sides of 6.3 by 9, we get the standard form equation x plus 5 whole squared over 9, plus y minus 4 whole squared over 1, equal to 1, which we label as 6.4. We're not quite done yet, since we still need to plot the graph of this ellipse in the xy plane. We shall do that next. We continue to solve problem 6. From 6.4, we now have the standard form equation of the given ellipse. Let's analyze this equation to help us determine the graph of this ellipse in the xy plane. Note that the length, a, of the semi-major axis is 3, and the length, b, of the semi-minor axis is 1. Then the constant c is calculated to be plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. In the standard form equation, since the denominator under the x term, 9, is greater than the denominator under the y term, 1, it follows that the major axis is horizontal. 
so this ellipse is horizontally oriented. Clearly, the center of this ellipse is the coordinate negative 5, 4. Its vertices are given by the coordinates negative 8, 4, and negative 2, 4. Its covertices are negative 5, 3, and negative 5, 5. Finally, its foci are given by negative 5 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2, 4. With all this information, we have the graph of this ellipse given in figure 2, as needed. Its center is in red, its vertices and covertices are in black, its foci are in purple, its major axis is in green, and its minor axis is in orange.